Hello guys and welcome back to Play the J. My name is Jay and I'm here with Kelvin Ung, um, aka Newbie, who is co my co-caster for this evening's Grim Games. And we just had our very first round of the evening. So we're going to get ready here for our second round on Miramar. So guys, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so it looks like for our first round on Miramar here is going to be all the way down from the southern island going up past La Cobrera as well. So uh, going to be interesting to see how these teams want to be spacing out, but plenty of opportunities for them to proceed for their preferred game plans, I would imagine. But we can already see quite a number of teams actually deciding to drop out early. I think we see Grim Gaming, 5CZ, uh, all dropping out towards Los Leones, and uh, they're going to be together with Team Ospol, our winners from round number one, which is Team Order, and uh, I think we're going to have a couple others there, including Elegiant Gaming, and also, um, which, which was that team that I mentioned, Gentleman's Club, Gentleman's Club, but... We have one team actually, uh, Zero Gravity, going to be all by themselves here going towards Valle del Mar. So they're going to be kind of happy with the result of this. And uh, Trumacera actually going to be only also one team occupying that. So Team Fury going to be uh, furiously looting right at the start of the game as uh, we're seeing that there's still going to be a relatively even spread for these other teams. But looks like Alcantara could be a potential hotspot here where we do also have uh, Team TMA as uh, Stadium Fighter actually moving towards La Cobrera and might be looking to uh, jostle a little bit with Legendary Gaming. And it already looks like a little bit of a chaotic start. Lots of anti-aircraft guns going off here as Team Order trying to put some hurt onto the players there of Gentleman's Club. But it looks like they're going to get in just in time here. But there are still some late dropping uh, coming in here from Allegiant Gaming here for the time being. But now it looks like Esco Rex going to be looting up a little bit close to Flood. And uh, going to be all by himself here for Team Ospol. So he's just going to be hanging out here. For the time being in Western Los Leones, k is going to be further up north. And it looks like Circle is going to shift all the way up to the north side here. And it looks like we might have our first blood of the game. Nietzsche here getting knocked down. And it looks like uh, Yung Chang going to be uh, putting the finishing touches there with the Molotov, no doubt. And uh, that's going to be uh, setting the tone there. Uh, and hopefully not in the case of Gold Army Factory, who are going to be one player down very early on. So looking at uh, the circle here, two minutes left before teams have to start moving. So all these Los Leones teams here are going to benefit, benefit just a little bit here by the fact that they actually dropped out quite early on in the game. And Parley will be able to maximize the amount of looting, but they still have to factor in the time of actually doing the rotation here as well. But usually there should be enough vehicles here and with these teams uh, experience in this competitive circuit, they should be really looking to get a lot of these vehicles early on. Esco Rex already having obtained his own vehicle and going to be moving a little bit further north. The, the other teams here in the center circle are going to be uh, benefiting the most here in this kind of situation that we have here. Never taking a few hits there after taking out uh, uh, one of the other players there already there from Grim Gaming. Grim Gaming now going to uh, jostle around here, get maybe a little bit more heals minimized. Very close to death there. This is so sad. Starting to move in as well, but Endeavor going to really take his time. He's not got any backup, so he really does have to try and uh, play this out quite right here. Otherwise, he's going to be uh, giving some loot back there. But I don't think that we're going to be seeing Grim Gaming here um, wanting to disengage from this too soon. But they're going to have to make some important decisions here. But this is still quite early in the game. And Circle is going to start moving in pretty soon. And it looks like Prowl actually getting knocked down there. And uh, looks like CF or C Franks here are going to be able to get the knock there. So Gentlemen's Club not going to be too happy with losing one of their players early here. But that's going to be what you sign up for when you drop into Los Leones mm -hmm. as there you really do run the risk of these potential fights. But looks like we're having some problems there for Austin for some. But they are trading blows there with uh, FFG. And now it's looking a little bit crazy here. As uh, now Bullet here trying to move in to see what he can do. Two of the players from... Uh, Awesome for some, actually got knocked down here by Tushik here, but he's going to be coming out on top 
in this situation. Gold <laughs> Army Factory actually putting a lot of pressure onto the players. The bait team, bait team having two of their players getting knocked down on the hill. I don't think that it's going to be too much that they can actually do about it. Nine Holy going to move in, but remember they did take that early loss here. But maybe that's going to set them with the right mojo here as we get towards the um, to the climax of this game. In fact. But we're already seeing that uh, some of the teams here in the Los Leones side of things are starting to make their way over with the uh, reduced amount of time that they have to loot and also get a secure position. But right in the center circle, going to be MIBN, going to be very happy having the whole of San Martin all to themselves here. But we'll see how that might be playing a part later on. And we have City and Fighter. All four members here are going to be hanging out on La Cobrera, taking their time, all inside the northern part of the circle at the moment. They do have Legendary V2 going to be hanging out just a little bit further east of their position here. Only going to be Tor 4K and G7 official. And they're actually moving away from the rest of City and Fighter. They would have seen them be dropping in a little bit earlier on and going to be seeing about whether or not they actually want to try and get those central positions in the circle. Now, in terms of the overall kind of strategy, even though we have these settings, it's not really going to be changing too much from what we usually see from the from the normal um, Malaysian competitive scene. There is going to be the predominant uh, strategy of getting into the center of the circle, but Miramar does tend to be a little bit more lax on that, as teams can opt to go inside the center of the circle or make a long rotation along the edges uh, much later on in the game. And playing on the edge in general, uh, maybe not as common amongst the teams and stuff, but you will get uh, some of the uh, teams being able to play both styles very effectively. And uh, a lot of those teams tend to be those that are able to have that kind of consistency in performance. When it comes to the kind of tournaments that we do have, so we'll be keeping an eye on some of these uh, experienced teams and uh, seeing whether or not they, we can pick their brain on how they are actually going to be playing this circle just a little bit. As Blue Zone now is going to be on the way, we're already seeing that uh, there is going to be the players from Fury and also Zero Gravity going to start moving in here as uh, there's just not going to be too many avenues that uh, maybe are going to be absolutely free of risk but likewise like we can see here like Monte Nuevo that's going to probably be a hot spot to avoid Fico already taking the long route around there just trying to get a little bit more uh, freedom you don't want to have your whole late game tarnished by the fact that you lost two people who flipped on a bike whose <coughs> tire got blown up by a straight SKS shot it's not really going to be uh, it's not that you would have wanted and I'm back Hey, welcome back, Kelvin. How are you, man? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you so much for covering for me. <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. I I can talk garbage, no problem. But uh, <laughs> uh, but not to say that this is garbage, so you guys can still like the stream and everything. So no problem there. <laughs> All right, so now you get to see Team Wolf. Hey, sorry, Team Wolf. Uh, Wolf is taking a couple of shots on Godot Factory Army. Or an Army Factory, sorry. That's the rotation. Yeah. Sorry. No, Sorry. No. Please, please go on. My bad. That's the rotation from FFG is hitting it a little bit more top to the north. <clears throat> and they are at the what do you call this compound? This compound uh, is it? I would just call this crater fields as well, because crater fields technically is that section a little bit further west over here, but uh, I'll still call it crater fields. Hmm. Okay. Because I, I, w I wanted to call it um, oil rig, but as you can uh, see, that there's oil a. Rig is fine. Like, yeah. <clears throat> so, as you can see, like, uh, G7 official, he's pretty close to the crate. And I'm wondering what the what's in the crate. Well, it could be a nice <laughs> little boost here early on. Oh, it's empty. But uh, oh. no, I think that's just because he's picking up whatever's inside. But. Uh, yeah, it looks like a nice Graza and level 3 out of his mind. Beautiful Graza. Yeah, so he's going to continue moving back uphill here. Um, I think the rest of Stadium Fighter are actually just going to hang out in Crater Fields for the time being. Not really looking to get too engaged right there. Yep, so as you can see, the circle is coming in. All teams are in the circle except for team... What team is this? I can't see the name. 
We've got us ball, and I think we do have uh, some of the gentlemen's club players here. Ah, gentlemen's club player, yep. Yeah. Okay, so they are still outside the circle, and of course, the circle closes into San Martin. Yeah, nice and central here. I think uh, we're going to be having MIBN very happy with that turn of events here. Really going to be benefiting them into the later stages here. But we'll see whether or not it's going to have some drastic shifts. Definitely going to have some opportunity for that to happen. And I think we do also have Outsiders, very aptly named, uh, also going to be in the blue zone right now. Mm, definitely. Um, <clears throat> one thing about playing in Mirama, having a vehicle is a must. It, it is essential, it's a must, because the map is huge. And for you to get from one point to another point, especially with the, with the circle closing in this fast, you definitely need a vehicle. You know, running on feet is almost impossible. And you get to see Risky, you know, taking the hit on Jet Joker with the vehicle. And finishing off with the Scar L. Nice little bit of row kill early on in the game as uh, going to be one of the first few kills there, not the first one. 68 still alive here and we haven't had any teams getting eliminated just just yet here, nor would we expect it just yet. Especially with teams looking to try and have a good showing here. Now of course it's practice scrim, but you, you still want to have those bragging rights, right? I mean, yep. maybe you played in scrims and everything. Um, uh, Quite, quite a bit, I would think. And uh, usually, what is the focus of for a lot of these players when they're participating in these scrims where technically there's not really anything to play for? Um, mostly, based, um, I can see, say that it's just the experience of um, rotation, you know, the, the, the communications that you have for your team, the team chemistry, uh, and of course, how your rotation is going to be like among team members, especially when you take on fights. Um, because screams like this, yeah, you know, you don't get much out of it, but um, you definitely get more on playing with much better players than just standard pub, uh, public players on the, the games itself. You get to see teams sticking more to each other. Uh, rotation is going to be very different. Uh, the communications also as well. So, and you can see more, um, you know, I, I, I would call it sandwiches, you know, because like, you know, every time you have a fight here and there, and definitely can see Fico taking down DMZMY and N on uh, Triple X Gaming, Chloe Q, and finishing off DMZY, MY. Yeah. For a very good shot there. Yeah, absolutely. Nice little bit of a push coming out here from the Zero Gravity players. I think, like, even in the first round, we did see them play a lot on the high ground positions like this. But this one, not afraid to take those kind of fights that we do see here. Yep, and definitely when when you play PUBG, you know, whenever you get hit, that kind of like gives you a scare jump in your heart, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, it could be dead space for all I know, you know? I've jumped out of my chair enough playing this game. And, uh, <laughs> And yeah, absolutely like what you're saying, you know, just getting that kind of chemistry and really just practicing uh, enough for, um, you know, making sure that your team is as competitive as possible. And sometimes, you, like you said, pub games, you're, you're going to find some good players, but it's not going to be to this level. And uh, and it's actually just a really completely different game, isn't it, you know, compared to normal public play, which uh, I, I think it's going to be good that the more that certain communities are able to actually have enough of these practice games that they, like to they actually play every single day of the week so if you're interested in playing do join the video server and look and see how you can get your team and uh, nice and practice and uh, hopefully ready for upcoming tournaments yep definitely for 2019 you get to see more PUBG tournaments coming up soon and <clears throat> And definitely having screams like this is going to be very beneficial because, um, like as I mentioned earlier, you know, you get to learn about rotations, you get to understand other opponents' uh, positioning, how they play, you know, you know, getting wiped out early in the game doesn't really matter because um, all these are all just the learning, the early learning phase of PUBG, you know, uh, competitive scene. You know? Absolutely. And uh, you've got nothing to lose. You just got to try and put in the effort there and it's really just going to happen. Uh, push your team forward one way or another, whether it's character building or whatnot. And it looks like Reigns are going to be taken out by the blue zone and Ospol going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yep. As you can see, Outsiders member Hughes taking a shot on Newton. 
And Risky basically trying to cover for his teammate. Hughes throwing the grenade. Is it gonna be a Kobe Nate? Oh! He finishes off Wilson. He's training hits with Risky and finishing off Team Gentleman's Club. It's quite unfortunate there. Yeah, Outsiders going to work here through Husey here as he's going to take down two of the players right there and uh, put the finishing touches onto them. As uh, We're going to have to see how these teams are going to be reacting to the circle. It's starting to shift a little bit away from San Martin. And uh, actually, we did see that uh, the players there from MIBN did actually get out of the center of town and move north. But now they're going to have to try and see about moving a little bit further south. But uh, now they're going to get uh, Gold Army Factory moving very close to them. Every Everyone else is starting to engage at very close ranges here on the western side of the circle. We're do, having to see Fury trying to manage the situation. Yep, Fury. Oh, in the smoke, he's getting shot from someone. Who is shooting him? Oh, from the other end of the map. Oh, but it looks Ooh. as though that he gets found out inside the smoke there as we're seeing awesome for some able to put the finishing touches there but uh, i think that team fury not happy with the third party <laughs> action coming in there from grim gaming definitely and so so jay basically you can see that the circle closes in even further you know like um Team uh, NIBN, you know, they, they were in St. Martin at first, but they moved to the corner of the circle. And that's definitely, a, for me, I feel that it's going to be a much better play because you don't want to get sandwiched in between too many teams. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that can totally happen, especially in San Martin itself. It's a good place to drop at the start of the game. One of those teams that likes to play dominance of uh, one of those very urban hotspots and everything. Yeah, later Ooh. Game. Ooh, not gonna hell insight going to blow up Husey right there so after coming out with that double kill unfortunately not gonna get much more luck in this round as uh, looks like team order going to be continuing to rack up the kills well only two kills so far in this game but yes as you said is quite right that uh, a lot of teams really don't want to be hanging around these urban areas where you can get absolutely sandwiched and it's going to be very difficult to disengage and entangle and do your rotations as you see the circle is developing so that's always going to be a, a deciding factor for a lot of these players yes, definitely and you get to see yun jang taking out ja jayuka jayaku jayaku okay. and maybe this time finishing off ffg Trading kids with I am Pute and finishing him off Team FFG. Okay, do we get the... the this is gonna be FFG goal. Yeah, FFG goal, okay. FFG goal, unfortunately, gets taken down there. Look, maybe this time coming over with a nice reaction shot there. And now that's a wreck in trouble there as uh being put back onto MIB and the Nate. Ooh, going on. Connects, the Nate connects. The car's on fire. He's throwing a couple of Kobe Nates over to uh TM8, Team TA, oh, getting on the kill to good boy. And definitely Raven, oh, the oh, team wipe. The, the kill field, absolutely stuffed there from MIBN's uh, action at uh, the expense of uh, the players there of TMA. TMA getting wiped out. FFG also getting taken out there in this game. I think it was by themselves <laughs> and the Blue Zone, in fact. So, so. Definitely think there's like a little bit, tad bit of a car accident there. Yeah, uh, sorry, wasn't able to catch the full breadth of that one just there, but now things are heating up. We're seeing Stadium Fighter Squad number 15 on your screen, having to repel intruders in the form of AWM, starting to move up. Yep, as you can see that two teams are in the same building, this apartment building, and definitely uh, Stadium Fighter is having the prime position of being on top of the uh, their opponents. Is, is it? Is it saying it right? Yeah. And Dini, oh, <laughs> getting taken down by uh, Arpes. Arpes, a beautiful finish off by Arpes. Wolf taking down I Insight from Team Order. Um, where's the region gonna be? Like, ooh, Arpes jumping off the building. Finding a prime position of our arrow and ooh, arrow. Very beautiful reflex there. Uh, well looks like played. Stadium Fighter are gonna come out on top of that one. They lost uh, one player there, I think. Uh, but it looks like they're going to be able to take that spot away from AWM after that furious fighting. They have spotted out Gold Army Factory north of their position, and they're going to be on the edge of the of the uh, west side of San Martin and going to have quite good vision on the surrounding areas. But we already see Team Order, our winners from round number one, moving into prime position here, trying to get into a better angle to spot out 
any of these other teams and just have that dominance on that side of the circle. Yep. And MBT Bozo, the last member of Team 18 Bait Team, spotted off a member from uh, at Triple X Gaming, moving into the circle. Uh, of course, definitely um, he's gonna be having a little bit of issues, but as a team, awesome, awesome, moving in, rotating into the circle as well. Oh, it looks like Google X got here, not having a lot of luck there. Pico gonna take him out there, and looks like now. 5CZ gonna have to make do with the two team members that they have remaining here. Things are getting increasingly crowded at the moment. They do have also got Team Aspel very close to them. I'm Coldblood, as you mentioned just now, the newbie is actually under a lot of pressure there from Bozo. Yeah. But Bozo just gonna try and move in a little bit here. He's gonna get a kill on the board, but he's taking a lot of long range fire and he's probably gonna have to reevaluate the decisions that he's made in this particular uh, instance here <laughs> and actually just go for a little bit more of a job. Yeah, I think he's going for a slight detour, you know, he's getting shot from uh, zero gravity. Uh, definitely, um, uh, I'm Google, is, is that his name just now? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I'm Coldblood, I'm Coldblood, Cold yeah. Cold yeah. I think he's definitely saved by <laughs> Team Zero Gravity, you know, because he, as, uh, he was moving into the circle under, uh, from his rotation. Uh, Bozo spotted him out and uh, he managed to get a little bit of cover from, an, uh, from one of the opponent team. As you can see, the circle closes in the prime position from team number 10, NIBN, on top of the hill. That's going to be definitely the best position you can get, especially when you play around the, with the surrounding area of St. Martin. Yeah, this place really is going to favor them quite a bit here. They're going to have good vision. They're still in the circle here for the next mm -hmm. phase. And we're going to see that all these teams here from San Martin are going to start sandwiching together. Yung Jang here going to have very good time onto the surrounding yeah. areas. Ooh, landing a nice long range shot there onto B2, but still going to be up and about there despite taking that M24 shot. Now they're all going to move a little bit further towards the central part of San Martin here. See whether or not they can get to a better position. Definitely. Actually, for me, um, they were uh, news about people using um, snipers nowadays. Uh, basically, from the latest updates, that basically uh, a lot of pro players were, were mentioning to me before this that carrying a sniper is not really an ideal gun. But unless you don't have any other other options, then having a sniper is okay. Because um, nowadays there's a lot of um, rotations and quick fights. You know, you need fast guns and someone to finish them off really quick. Because snipers, you know, yeah, you can do the one hit one kill. But the, you, you're, it's not really consistent, you know, you can't really finish them off. And yes. you get she F Franks from uh, Allegiant Gaming getting hit there pretty heavily from Team 16, which is going to be the legendary V2, having a good position in St. Martin. And it looks like they're trying to fend off this push here. The circle just going to push them through and looks like the shot's going through the smoke there. And going to yeah. take down B, so it looks like 4K looking to add more to his uh, list here of names. And uh, he's actually moving straight into the building here, but he's actually... Oh, sorry, I don't know what happened with the camera there. But it looks like uh, Rapido's here, going to be finishing him off. And now we're only going to have one player left for uh, Legendary V2. Dealing out with the last player there from um, Allegiant Gaming. But now things are getting a little bit more crowded here. And actually looks like all the players there from Order have disappeared here. I think they face yep. a little bit too much pressure coming out from all the other teams. But I think um, one of the Order members is still surviving. Mukao is still alive. Yeah, I think yep. they had three players here on the hill. So it's really gone south a little bit. Yep. But I think the position from Order is going to be a bit tough for them because the rest of the remaining areas is kind of open. You don't have much cover for that. Especially him knowing that someone's behind him right now is going to add more pressure to Mukao because he's, as you can see, he's still looking at the back, you know, trying to find the opponent from um, backstabbing him. Oh, but however, uh, Bullet L got taken out by uh, It's Raven from Team Order. Oh wow, so a, a little bit of a favor being dealt for <laughs> Team Order right there as they still have Muchao who's still alive here, but he's now taking fire Ooh. from Raven. Raven does not discriminate, ladies and gentlemen, he <laughs> will treat everyone fairly by the end of his barrel. So don't worry from that. It looks like now Muchao here are going to be very aware of the problems potentially coming in and it's still going to be very good for um, the players of MIBN right now and Gold Army Factory going to be very happy on that edge of Yep. San Martin right there as well. De definitely, definitely. And of course, you can get to see that team, uh, team uh, Stadium Fighters, they 
are also in a very uh, good position of the apartments. You know, four men strong, fight, t- uh, taking fights with the Golden Army Factory guys. Uh, but of course, uh, Golden, uh, sorry, Golden, is it? Go- oh, sorry, Go Army Factory. They have a slight bit of disadvantage towards the team order from the top of the hill, but they have ample cover definitely uh, to compete with them. So for me, I think the rotation from Team Order is going to be uh, uh, pretty critical if once the, the circle closes in, because for their rotation from the top heel is going to make them really um, make them really open to the rest of the opponents from the rest of the map. Absolutely, uh, but I think they do have this moment in time where they will be able to get good vision on everyone else. It looks like moves mm-hmm. are starting to come out there from zero gravity. They are looking across the globe here. Trying to put some pressure back on Jinkaleva, gets the headshot right there. I think Jinkaleva's helmet was already taken off earlier. I'm not sure if he uh, got a new one, but in all likelihood it's probably gone again over here. As uh, now we're already seeing Aerol and Udi not going to be in a great position to try and help out their teammates. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. No worries. Well, I think Backtrack here is uh, going to be all by himself there. He's not going to be able to save his team member there, but now it looks like Zero Gravity had enough uh, time there. It looks like Jinkalewa is going to bleed out here as uh, the rest of Zero Gravity going to start moving in here. They're starting to put in more pressure onto the players of Stadium Fighter. They only have Udin and Irul to try and hang out there in that uh, next multi-story building at the moment here. Biko is going to be happy to hang out there. It looks like uh, Muchao here going to have to move out a little bit and uh, the good vantage point that we have here for MIBN definitely even even though it's not going to be around them later on in this uh, in the very later stages of the circles they're going to know where everyone is you know so yep. they can really plan out the most effective rotation strategy yep definitely and um, for me definitely the fights in the buildings is going to be pretty much uh, difficult because there's only so much you can look at so many angles you can uh, be focused focusing on uh, and you can see Mukao amazingly getting a very good definitely cover in between all this fights right now you know the last member of team order uh with two kills on him as well oh backtrack taking out blades k bikes taking a trade kill on backtrack and that will be out i'm uh, sorry uh, okay. basically team four is out of the map right now k bikes getting hit by stadium fighter on errol on aim and 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 then and then and then and then and and blade oh is blade oh blade is out of the circle yeah, I think they were just, uh, Aspel was just in a really difficult spot right there. I think Ooh. they faced a huge crossfire with Udin coming in all the way from the apartment building there. And uh, now with the circle shifting again to the north here, really looking good for MIBN right now. Um, it's going to force all these teams into Gold Army Factory. I, I, I hope that they, uh, if only they had something like they had in uh, Blackout where you could start putting barriers and everything. <laughs> you know exactly where the hot spot is. Yeah, the utilities be. you can get from Blackout, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, we are in PUBG, so we'll talk about PUBG only. But yeah, for the most part, I think that Gold Army Factory would be able to spot out a lot of these teams here, especially Zero Gravity, still full strength here, but they have taken one knock just then, as currently Aerial and Routine mm-hmm. are just currently hanging out and putting a stop to any further advancement. Jay, you have to look at Mukao. He took the vehicle and went straight into the circle, risking the fact that he could be, you know, focused on by uh, Team Air. Sorry, Team Order. Sorry, is it Order? Sorry. Oh, by Team NIBN, you know. Uh, yeah. Definitely, MIBN knows that uh, Mukao has been closing into them. Go to Fa- Army Factory, paying attention to the teams that is going to be rotating in. Circles closing in slowly but surely. Uh, definitely can see that. Oh, Arrow taking out N. Tita will get care of in his own, and there are fights everywhere. Wow, and it looks like the whole is zero gravity in one fell swoop, actually not able to push past uh, Stadium Fighters building right here, just facing too much pressure. Esco Rex going to be thanking them by taking down UD in turn here, leaving only Arrow by himself. And now K-Bikes and Esco Rex can focus a little bit more on Gold Army Factory. They are starting to advance a little bit more. Gold Army Factory actually still very much looking at Arrow. Arrow going to be taking a bit too much damage and going be taken down by the Uso. But now it looks like um, the, the holiday period given out by MIBN is over here after they've taken out Mukao, but uh, alleviating some of the pressure on the southern side of the circle. 
Yep, and definitely you can see MIBN making the rotation in. Uh, definitely know where the Golden Army Factory is at. Uh, K Bikes moving in from the right side, finding a very good cover in the building itself, getting shot by John, uh, sorry, Yung Jung. Uh, and you can see that K Bikes took a very prime position of being in the circle already. Oh, S Crash picking up by. Oh, finishing off, getting finished off by uh, Golden Army Factory, Dreams YR. Dreams, Dreams going to town, picking up a couple of kills there for Gold Army Factory. Three teams left alive here, mix of six pushing up, but Yung Jang gonna come out on top with 9 HP. So now it's Gold Army Factory versus uh, MIBN here, and uh, it's not looking like a, a too good of a spot. The only saving grace here is the circle has pushed down towards the low ground. Yep, and so how how is Golden, sorry, Gold Army Factory gonna be rotating here? You know, trading it with Raven. Raven taking Niholi down. Uh, that trades from the higher angle of the heel. Definitely pays off. Spots with a member of KMF. Yunjang rotating into the circle. Uh, Golden, uh, sorry, I keep saying Golden Army Factory. Uh, I used to make the same mistake. Sorry, Golden Army <laughs> Factory, guys, but yeah. I don't know. I have to watch the Hellboy movie. I always keep thinking Golden Army as well, but I. Never mind. We all learn together, and yep. uh, apologize <laughs> for saying it wrong sometimes. But yep. Old Army Factory, rightly moving a little bit towards the western side here, where the compound is actually a little bit inside. So now, Nine Holy Gooder returns some fire to Raven, but looks like that is that came at a big cost. Mm, definitely, maybe this time, very good shot on Nine Holy, uh, but unfortunately, he's gonna be taken out. And get uh, finished, get finished off. Oh, beautiful shot again! A very nice hit shot from Sky again. Trying to finish off the member of Dreams. Oh, and KMF taking me out. Take, trading hits with maybe this time. The members are rushing up, taking down Raven. It's a one on one situation. KMF 1 versus Yung Jang. And it looks absolutely chaotic. Everyone trying to save everyone, but just really not out there. So KMF 1 going to opt for the heal here. And Yung Jang now forced to come out. Yep. So Yun Jang, uh, popping smokes everywhere, trying to create distraction, trying to move in to spot the uh, army factory, and yes, beautiful play by Dreams. Well done, Dreams. Good job, Goal Army Factory, making it top for the chicken chicken dinner. And that was a chaotic end right there, and it didn't look like uh, MIBN really had the everything planned out and sorted there. And I like the plays coming out from maybe this time. He took down two of the players there. I would, maybe if he waited a little bit longer for after uh, finishing off the before finishing off the first kill, he could have drawn out some of the Gold Army Factory players and made it a lot easier. But uh, it, he decided to go for the. The elimination there and he still took out the next player there but it was awesome plays coming out there from uh kmf1 to really make sure that they could stay in the game there so goal army factory gonna come out on top take the second chicken dinner of the evening yep with 11 kills and on um, placing number two is gonna be uh placing number two will be mibn with the total kills of 14. And of course, you can see that uh, definitely just now the rotation, uh, perhaps like what you mentioned just now, Jay, that mm. maybe this time should have waited for his teammates to close in first so they can do a little bit more trading and kills. Uh, however, uh, basically the the um, perhaps there was a miscommunication or uh, could be that in the adrenaline rush that gives them the morale boost to go in. You know, I took down two. I'm gonna go for the last one, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Gold Army Factory they got a better position. They knew where he was coming from. So kudos to uh, Gold Army Factory for winning the chicken dinner for this game. Absolutely, and uh, to round out the top five in third spot, we do have um, the players there from uh, Legendary V2, Ospul, coming in fourth. And then, of course, our winners from round number one, Team Order, coming out, uh, as well as could be hoped for with just one player for much of the later stages of the circle, through Kika Muchao. Okay. I'm sorry. If I, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but it's a little bit challenging. But guys, yep. we are going to be taking a short break here on Play of the J, and when we return, um, newbie and I will be bringing you through round number three on Erin So don't go away. Thank you very much.